somebody to love, find me somebody. Hey, well, it's, uh, I think it's July 17th, July 16th. I don't keep track of days, man. It's summer. Anyway, and this is on the um, UF Right? Yeah, yeah, you get that. QRS. S T U F. Anyway, now it's probably backwards, so you'll have that. Because I didn't do it with my right hand, because I'm left handed. That's how I roll. Anyway, this is. Uh, 117, and it's the match between Anderson and Spider Silva and Shale Sonnen. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to break the fighters down, give my opinion. This is the uh, prediction, breakdown prediction thing. Shale Sonnen, 26, 10, and 1. He's a great wrestler, uh, pressure fighter. He's NCAA All American, U.S. Olympic alternate two-time national champion in Greco-Roman wrestling. Uh, he's not a big striker. He only has seven knockouts to his record. Uh, he's not really big on submissions either. He's only got three submissions to his record. Um, he's uh, tough. He has stamina for days. Uh, and as I mentioned, he has that extreme uh, wrestling background. The problem is, is he's... His wrestling, his, his lunge in, when he's going in, when he's shooting you, and he's going down, the arms come way outside, the head is down. And that leads to a lot of problems. I mean, he was caught in a guillotine choke, Marquardt almost had him out, you know, uh, just by him shooting in, because he's so open for it, because he's almost like leading with his head. He doesn't really get them shoulders up in there and get, get the whole thing. It's more out like this. Ooh, yeah! Anyway... He's okay with the ground and, ground and pound, okay. I mean, eh, it's pretty pit pitiful anyway, he really. I mean, he throws the occasional elbow, a lot of wasted punches, a ton of wasted punches that do nothing. I mean, if you're just going to tap somebody like this, don't even bother throwing a punch. Conserve your energy to do other things. You know, break his collarbone. I mean, those are cool things. Can You, you can punch someone in the throat, can't you? I mean, when did that become illegal? So, I mean... His, his stand-up is okay for the UFC. He get knocked out in like 25 seconds in a professional fight. But, you know, for the UFC, he's got okay stand-up, but okay stand-up is shite in the UFC. So, when you're looking at it, and seven of his ten losses have been by submission. So he's very, very, uh, you know, open. He, he leaves himself open. He overextends his arms. Instead of keeping them close in and tight on the body, he's reaching out and extending them. And that puts him in bad positions. He's 27% uh, of his fights uh, uh, don't go the distance. Which, I mean, if this was in boxing, when you say a guy's got 37 fights and he's only got 7 knockouts... He hits roughly harder than a feather smacking you upside the head. Basically, that's what that means in, bo in boxing. Um, his last KO was three years ago. And he is coming off a nice win over Nate Marquardt, who um, sort of blasted out in like, the first round. But anyway, uh, so, but he was getting worked in the last minute of that fight, if you watch that. He was, and he bled a lot. He gets hit a lot. He's tough. He's got a good beard. But at the same time, the only thing he really has going for him is his wrestling ability. And that's for not if you can't get a dude on the ground. And if you shoot yourself open like that, you're leaving yourself open for a lot of bad, bad things to happen to you. The second you take your eyes off somebody to shoot, that's if you're dealing with somebody that has great stand-up, like Anderson Silva, who's 26 and 4, He's a boxer, Muay Thai, Taekwondo, Judo, you name it, throw it out there, and people can knock the belts. I knock most of the belts. Uh, just because you're a black belt in something doesn't mean you're really good at it. I, I was mud stomping black belts in Kung Fu when I was only a green belt. So that doesn't matter, but the ability, how you do it, matters, and that's what he does. 
He's got 15 of his wins are by knockout. He has massive, um, you know, another four of them were by submission. So 19 of his fights, of the 30 fights, for 63%, you know, don't go the distance. They don't. So, and those that do, they're, they're a little worse for wear when they're done. And you look, you have to go back to 2004 to see his, his uh, last loss. And that was to uh, submission. That uh, ankle lock, I think it was. Like ankle, heel, hook thing. Um, he's a massive, massive striker. This, the, the man knows boxing. He's, he's put his work in, the Muay Thai, all that, deadly with the knees, deadly with the elbows. There, he waits for you. He's an amazing counterpuncher, sets you up, watches you walk into it because you decided not to do any stand-up or learn how to box, and he just makes you absolutely pay. He has freakish knockout power. Ask Forrest Griffin where he got knocked out while he was going backwards. And people that know boxing, that just doesn't happen. You know, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson was like the last guy to really knock people out going backwards. So, I mean, he's deadly accurate with his punches. He has decent submissions. I'm not going to say he's great at submissions. He doesn't have to be great at submissions. Because the thing is, is once you get punched upside your head, usually you forget what you're doing. Your game plan that you had, all that you worked for, usually goes out the window. And that's even with the great fighters. You know, it takes them a while, they recover, then they go. But if you get tagged two, three times in a row, you're going to sleep. You know, he has a great defense, and he's explosive when he counters. And that's the one thing. He waits for you to make that horrible mistake, and, and MMA fighters are notorious for throwing the whitest shots on the planet. You can almost count to two before the shot gets to your face. And you see it coming, you wait, you wait, and then you just hammer them down, and then they go to sleep. Um, he has a nice beard. He can take shots. He took great shots from Rich Franklin. Forrest Griffin, when you see the fights, he gets hit, so he gets flush, but he still goes. Um, he knocked out Forrest. He knocked out Franklin twice. Uh, Marquardt, Chris Lieben, who just had two great fights over the past month. So um, his first, uh, he lost in his first fight, uh, a decision, you know. One of his losses came as a disqualification for a kick, a late kick. Uh, he submitted twice, as I said. You're, you're talking about a man that's freakishly good. And people can boo him and say what they like, but the honest, the honest thing is, is until somebody actually gets a stand-up game that's worth a crap to go up against him, he's going to smoke him out. I mean, the wrestling is great, but if you don't have ground and pound to go with the wrestling, you're just riding the pony for a while. It's not going to happen. You've got to get your striking up to his, or at least close to where you can hang. So that's the thing, and I, I don't think this goes the distance. I know bon, uh, Sonnen's a, a nice guy. He's very loquacious, has a big, big vocabulary, and he's fun to listen to. And But the reality is, is he's going to sleep. And I'll give him the second round. I'll say that, you know, uh, Silva will... Feel him out for the first round, and then go to work in the second. And it's going to probably be knee strikes after he punches him upside his head and he goes to cover up, and he's just going to go in for the dirty box and rock those knees all night long. So that's what I'm going with, Anderson Spider Silva. By knockout, second round, knee strikes. Not even throwing knee strikes, man. That's crazy. All right, wait. Comment, rate, subscribe. Uh, Looking forward. Thank you for your time. This is Big Ragu. I'm out.